That's amazing. Not seen this for quite a few years. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. That's really, really special. Really, really special. That's quite a moment, isn't it? Oh, it's an absolute shock, I thought. Goodness me, you know, I've not seen this boat for years and years, you know, 25 years plus. Yeah, equally shocked, so you've done very well to keep it all under cover. Um, but I was straight into quality inspection, which I'm pleased to say, after almost 30 years, the standards are the same now as they were back then. So, yeah. It quite, passed. Quite, it, it did pass, John, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks so good, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Even all the gold leaf, look. It yeah. is in such good condition. Real piece of history. We both grew up uh, messing about on water, and it was it was a it was a passion. At some point, it was probably logical that after owning a couple of really small, cheap boats and having a, a workshop that was available to us, that we'd have a go. Then, of course, you know things developed from there, and we realised that there was a potential of possibly turning this into a small business. I remember every single piece of wood on here <laughs> <laughs> from 30 years ago. <laughs> Cutting them out on our bandsaw. It's even got a smell to it. Yeah. Like a, a vintage car smell. Early stages were, 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 was literally in our garden shed at home um, with the little office under the stairs. That, that, that was it and it was working seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day sometimes, whatever it took to progress the boat and achieve what we wanted to achieve. We, we had to sacrifice an awful lot. I, I distinctly remember having three part-time jobs as well whilst I was you know, building the boats just to try and keep a little flow of money coming in. It was tough, tough times and you had to think very carefully about what did we actually need next for the boat? Where did we put our resource, which was you know, not in abundance at that, at that time. We were, we were really stretched. I'm gonna get in the driving seat. <laughs> That's so comfortable. Our first boat show was Henley on Thames. Yes, it and was. Uh, we'd made the inland waterway show. We'd made the boat show stand ourselves in the garden. It was out of wooden pallets. Oh, so we've got pictures of the, of the 1990s with the baggy chinos at our first boat show, mm. which, which which is fantastic. And then you know, absolutely brilliant today that that Mike, our first customer, has come to the factory with our first boat. You know, Mike played a part in starting this business off. And it's just unbelievable that he's kept the boat and it still looks as good as it did back then today. Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, how are you doing? You haven't changed a bit, you haven't changed a bit. I recognise you straight away. I've got in your boat. <laughs> really nice to see you, Mike. It's been so long, hasn't it? It's, it's a real shock, actually. Oh, we didn't expect it at all. Anything like this, so... Oh, I'm glad it's brought me a little joy. Then. Oh, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A small, it, it... small tear to the eye, I think, as well. So Roy Roy joined us, I think, in about 2003. Three, yeah. Roy's input was at a time when we had focused in on the, the, the jet tender concept and we had a product called the Ski Rib that led to quite a number of sales. We were still working from the garden shed. I think it was around about that stage that we were talking to Roy, who was a friend of a friend that came in, saw what we were doing, and we realized we needed some investment of capital. It was really logical to go with someone who was also equally as passionate about boats and boating as, as we were and that had the business acumen. And it, it was the three of us at that time and the individual skills that we had together that made the business take off in, the, in those early days. I think the whole boat has been looked after so, so well. So well. 
Oh, it's fantastic. So what it is, you see quality Williams craftsmanship lasts at least 30 years. <laughs> Boats such as Jade, it's very different to what we're producing now. The quality is still right up there. And that's been one of the, the foundation stones of the business all the way through going forward. We were fortunate enough to start off uh, manufacturing slightly larger boats that demanded high quality. So the attention to detail on boats like Jade and Isana meant that we were used to that quality and that's what we expected. So when we started with the, the jet tenders, all that was built into them from the start. And the windscreen map, do you remember how long the windscreen took to make? All fabricated from uh, sheet brass, cut out by hand, and then chrome plated. I, I think it's fair to say that neither of us could have expected the business to have gone in the direction that it has done over the last 20 years and grown into what it is today. You don't often think about it because you're so focused when you own and run a business on the future and trying to drive it forward and trying to keep everybody employed and growing and the business growing that you don't often look over your shoulder. Um, and you need to be prodded a bit and reminded sometimes to, to, to do that. It's a team effort. We, it's impossible for, for two individuals to do it by themselves. Clearly, it's the team that we've been able to build up around us and many of whom start, have started uh, you know, many years ago and have stayed, stayed with us. So we've got something special, we know that. That's enabled us to have enjoyed the success that we, that we have done as, as, as a company. Can we, can we put it on the lake? <laughs> I want to give it a run. Neither of us, I think John mentioned earlier, we've not seen the boat for 25 years, which, you know, that's, that's special, so you've done really well to keep it hidden. I knew something was up when there was a lot of people milling around with looking a bit, a little Look bit, a bit sheepish. sheepish. So, yeah, we, we, we knew something was up. But, it's no, fantastic really, really surprise, yeah. really and is great fantastic that, surprise. And great that Mike, Mike can be here with us today. Yeah. Fantastic. Where's the key? Classic, isn't it? Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. I mean, that's the history of, of boat building. Um, wooden boats, frames and, and, and planking. And for how we grew up in terms of what our interests were as a, as a family and what our workshop was capable of doing, we could build a wooden boat. Um, and it's, it's something that really a lot of the techniques haven't changed for hundreds of years. Some of the materials have changed, but it's still a traditional way to build a boat. We were certainly more comfortable building the, the wooden boat than we would have done a fiberglass. It's only you know, through just learning we've, we've, we've put um, our skills to, to conquer different, uh, different materials. But the wooden boats were something that, it was a natural progression from what we were used to working with. When our father was around, we'd help him in the workshop. In his retirement, he was making wooden furniture. So both Matt and myself used to have, pull our little sort of benches up alongside him so that we were at the same height at his, at his workbench and help. And that's, that's where the skills came from. 
you know, the, the memories we have, or certainly what I have from, the, from those early days, were uh, very, very fond memories indeed. And working on something that we both loved to do at the time, working with, with wood in a workshop that was father's workshop, uh, is, it was a very nice time for us.